Hello. In the last two movie segments, we developed the story of the atom. And we stopped the second segment by describing Bohr model of the atom, which beautifully explained the various energy levels and it explained the discrete spectrum, the different colors of the hydrogen spectrum. So, do we have a perfect picture of the atom? Well, the answer is no. It is far from being perfect. Why? Because Bohr model of the atom only explains the simplest of the spectrum, the spectrum of hydrogen. Hydrogen is a very simple element, one proton and one neutron, and the possible electronic transitions are limited, and it explains the beautiful red, uh, uh, yellow, green, blue, violet, and so on. But now if you go and look at the spectrum of higher elements like helium, lithium, and higher and higher, the spectrum gets more and more complicated. The Bohr model does not really explain this complicated picture of the, of the atom. So, we need to now modify our theory, and that is where the quantum theory of the atom comes in. What you see here is helium light. I'm going to allow the light produced by a helium source to pass through a diffraction grating, and I want you to look at the spectrum. Look at the profusion of lines in the spectrum. There are a lot more lines in the spectrum of helium than in the spectrum of hydrogen. So in order to explain a complex spectrum like this, Bohr model of the atom is not sufficient. We've got to look for something else. So that is where we begin to discuss the quantum mechanical model. The basis of quantum theory is a theory introduced by Louis de Broglie in 1921 in which he said all matter behave like waves as well. In other words, the duality of matter. Now, that is an important concept where you and me, electrons, mountains, little balls, they all have wave nature and particle nature. Now what are the characteristics of a particle? A particle of course has mass and it can move with a certain velocity which means it has momentum. What are the characteristics of waves? When you hear about a wave you've got to ask what is waving? When we talked about a wave we talked about the variation of amplitude. What is waving is the variation of the amplitude. So, a particle can behave like a wave? Well, let's see how the theory was evolved from this duality of... Now, de Broglie suggested that particles could sometimes behave as waves and waves could be interpreted as particles. <clears throat> now, one such particle that we discussed so far is the particle called photon. You remember in Bohr model of the atom, when an electron jumps from one energy level, a higher energy level to a lower energy level, it emits a packet of energy. And we said that packet of energy is H times the frequency. That is a quantum of energy. And that can behave like a particle. And the particle has wave characteristics. Well, we can actually develop a model of the atom based on that. Now, a particle has a momentum P and wave has a wavelength lambda. That means if you have to assign a duality, a dual nature, then you have to find a relation between these two. Is there a relation between momentum of a particle and its wavelength? Indeed, there is a relation between momentum and the wavelength. And uh, this is the equation that de Broglie came up with. Lambda equal to h over p. 
Look at where that H comes from again. What does H stands for? It is the Planck's constant and its approximate value is 6.64 times 10 to the negative 34 uh, meter squared kilogram per second. And since momentum equal to m times v, we can write lambda equal to h over mv, a very important relation. Well, does it mean that you can measure my wavelength to your wavelength, the wavelength of this stick? Well, let's have a look. A small problem. What is the de Broglie wavelength of a ball of mass 0.15 kilogram? thrown with a velocity of 40 meter per second. That will be interesting. It's a very simple problem, is that right? Lambda equal to h over mv, p equal to mv. So h we know, m and v are given, and look at that wavelength. It is 1.1 times 10 to the negative 34 meter. How big a wavelength is that? Well, if you measure my wavelength, it will be much shorter because my mass is greater than the mass of that ball. Is that right? When I move with a certain velocity? Well, because it is so small, it is very difficult for us to discern it. And therefore, uh, associating a wave with a particle, for us it is not very practical, we would say. But it becomes very clear when the particle becomes very small. And let's see in the next problem. What is the de Broglie wavelength of the wave associated with an electron that has been accelerated from rest through a potential of 50 volts? Well, I have not given you the velocity of the electron. Is, there, is it possible to find the velocity from here? Well, you know that energy well, in the last lesson I told you about electron volt. What is an electron volt? Small energies are measured in electron volt. If an electron is subjected to a potential difference of one volt, the energy, the kinetic energy acquired by that is one electron volt. And that one electron volt is equivalent to the charge on an electron it is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules that means if you subject an electron to a charge of 50 volts the energy it will acquire will be the charge of the electron multiplied by the voltage is that clear well well, one electron volt is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And this is the energy of one electron, 1E, when subjected to one volt. Now, that is E electron volt. When one electron is subjected to a potential difference of one volt, the energy it acquires is E electron volt. Therefore, if an electron is subjected to V volts, a potential difference of V volts, the kinetic energy it will acquire will be E times V joules. And we can take that E times V joules and equate it to one half m V squared and calculate the velocity of the electron from this given data. That's what we're going to do. All right, let's do that now. So, the work done in accelerating an electron by a voltage V is E times V. Work done is a measure of the energy acquired by the electron. Now, this becomes the kinetic energy of the electron such that one half mV squared equal to E times V. And we can solve for the velocity of the electron from there. That will be V equal to 2EV divided by M. We know all these values, the charge on the electron, the potential difference is given, the mass of the electron we know, is that right? And using all those values, we get the velocity of the electron is 4.119 times 10 to the 6 meter per second. Now, we know the velocity, we know the mass of the electron, 
and therefore we can now calculate its de Broglie wavelength. What's the equation for de Broglie wavelength? Lambda equal to h over mv and using all the known values it gives me 1.74 times 10 to the negative 10 meter which is 0.174 nanometer. Well, is that a small number? Well, in our daily life, that is a very small number. But it is really not a small number when the size of the electron is taken into consideration. You see, if you want to uh, compare that wavelength, which is 0.174 nanometer, with the diameter of an electron, Actually, 0.174 nanometer is hundreds of times the diameter of an electron. That means, when compared with the size of the electron, this wavelength is very considerable. That means, an electron has considerable wave characteristic. It can be a particle, at the same time, it behaves like a wave. So, the dual nature becomes very obvious when you go down to the very level of minute particles. Well, let's now talk about Schrodinger wave equation. Now, you've got to get back to me and tell me what you have learned about it. 